Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, August 17th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. I talked before about Malware Bazaar. Uh, that's the website that allows you to download malware that other people contributed to their repository, including in daily badges. And now the problem, of course, with these daily badges is you get a ton of files and the DA today has some tips on how to easier filter these badges with some simple Yara rules and zip dump. So great way to look at individual samples and filter them out. And of course, Diddy is also providing some sample Yara rules to get you started. An IoT inspector company that's dealing with uh, firmware analysis and looking for vulnerabilities in firmware has uh, taken a closer look at the RTL 8000 series of systems on a chip. You probably have heard of these systems uh, before. They're very commonly used to implement Wi-Fi functionality, in particular in lighter weight devices like home-based routers and such. And of course, IoT Inspector being a company looking for vulnerabilities. Yes, they wrote a blog because they found some in this particular type of chipset. The vulnerabilities were found in their software development kit that is commonly used by vendors to implement their own custom software for uh, these uh, chips. And well, uh, IoT Inspector identified about 65 different vendors that used this particular chipset and as a result are now vulnerable to have their devices taken over remotely. IoT Inspector released plenty of details about these vulnerabilities, so it shouldn't be all too difficult to develop exploits for it. As an end user, of course, you need to wait for the vendor of the particular piece of equipment that you're using uh, to release an update. The IoT Inspector blog has a list of possibly vulnerable devices attached to it. I doubt that the list is complete. It's mostly based on some scanning uh, via Shodan and such that IoT Inspector uh, did. Start TLS has always been sort of a little bit an ugly workaround if you're trying to negotiate a TLS connection on the fly, not necessarily knowing ahead of time whether or not a particular service supports TLS. So it's often used between uh, mail servers, uh, for example, and has had some known weaknesses all along, just uh, because the initial negotiation, whether or not the protocol is supported, is performed in the clear before any kind of authentication takes place. Researchers from the University Münster have now taken a closer look at other possible attacks against the protocol and essentially found that the protocol itself actually in some cases can make a mail server or a service that is taking advantage of Star TLS less secure. Pretty much all sort of common implementations of Star TLS have been identified as being somewhat vulnerable to some of uh, these flaws uh, being uh, pointed out here. Patches should have been released uh, at least for most of uh, the affected clients and servers. And if you ever run into the back end of a phishing site, and one of the things to look for is if you have some kind of access log or something like this is some of the first hits to the phishing page, which often indicates who put up the phishing page because the attacker often tests the phishing page first before advertising it via email or whatever means is being used to advertise it. But well, uh, what's worse is if you are developing an info stealer uh, malware and run it as part of your testing, I assume, on your own system and then your data gets leaked. Apparently this happened to the developer of the Raccoon info stealer, Alan Gal from Hudson Rock, a company that sort of deals with cybercrime intelligence came across a data set that included what looked like the data that was leaked from the developer's system. 
Interesting insight, of course, into the developer's uh, thought process and other uh, things that uh, may be found on the system. And uh, Alan uh, did uh, publish this as part of a Twitter thread. Well, this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.